Howdy, Rock Buddies. It's Papa. Hope you guys are doing well today. Um, and today's topic of discussion is ripple marks, cross beds, and mud cracks. We're going to find out what they are, when they form, where they form, and why. And we're also going to find out what they tell us about what happened in the past geologically. So if this video is helpful, please subscribe. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed. It helps me immensely. Um, and so here we go with ripple marks, cross beds, and mud cracks. Let's start with ripple marks. Ripple marks are shapes made in sand by shallow moving water. So Rock Buddies, why did I say shapes made in sand? sand and not silt and clay well there may be a little bit of silt but it's mostly sand and the reason why is if this shallow water is flowing very fast the sand will be held in the water and it will move with the water and won't be deposited in a shape instead the water will scour out the bottom until you get to bedrock on the other hand if the water is moving super slow it will not have enough velocity to make any shape on the bottom and it won't have enough velocity to carry sand silt or clay it'll just be clear running water and why have ripple marks got to be in shallow water well because if the water's too deep then there will not be enough water flow power on the bottom to make a shape so no ripple marks Okay, since we know that ripple marks form in sand and shallow water, that tells us that we will find ripple marks in shallow rivers, on beaches and sandbars, and on desert dunes. So let's look at some present day ripple marks. If you've been to the beach and who hasn't, you've seen ripple marks. I'm sure you guys know what they look like. On the beach, you find ripple marks in the area between the high tide mark and the low tide mark, where water comes and goes. That's called the intertidal zone. And you would also find ripple marks on the offshore sandbar. Here is a picture of a river flowing and creating ripple marks on the bottom, on the shallow bottom. Uh, the red arrow shows you the direction of flow of the river, but you could actually look at the ripples themselves and tell that, and we'll get into that later. And finally, here are desert dune ripple marks. These ripple marks were not created by water, as you likely know, they were created by wind. Now, whether we're talking water or wind, there are two major kinds of ripple marks. First, there's the two-way or symmetrical kind of ripple mark. That's where the water flows one way for a while, and then it flows back the other way for a while, like the kind that you would find in the intertidal zone of a beach. And the other kind is the one-way or asymmetrical ripple mark, like you would find in a river where the water flows in one direction and continues to flow only in that one direction. These funky terms refer to the shape of the ripple mark. Rock buddies, hold on to your hats because I'm fixing to show you some strange monster truck videos and see if you can figure out how these quick videos relate to ripple marks. Okay, Rock Buddies, let's look at those videos again without sound, and we're going to pretend that the um, course with the hill, the jump hill on it, is a ripple mark in a river. One way, asymmetrical ripple mark. The truck is a grain of sand, and the truck's motor is the power of the river that's pushing it along. Let's see what we can come up with and relate it to ripple marks. Okay, first the truck or grain of sand moves along this 
not so steep long ramp and then when it goes over it loses its power and falls almost straight down first there's the long low ramp then there's the steep short fall the ramp and the fall let's look at it again the ramp and the shortfall. That example that you just saw is an example of an asymmetric ripple mark like you'd find in a river where the continued flow of the river makes a ripple mark that is shaped one way on one side and one way on the other. On the upstream side it's a long low ramp. On the downstream side it's a short steep fall. Continuing on with this wacky analogy, in a two-way or symmetrical ripple mark, first the water flows one way and then it flows back the other way. This is the kind of thing you find in the inner tidal zone where the tide comes in and shapes the ripple mark and then the tide goes out and shapes the ripple mark again. And the ripple mark is pretty much symmetrical, but we're gonna find out that it's not always exactly symmetrical and that gives us a clue about how the water flows in these areas. So Rock Buds, let's look at some pictures of ripple marks and see if we can figure out whether they're symmetrical or asymmetrical. Here's some ripple marks from the beach, probably the intertidal area, and they're roughly symmetrical, but not quite. Which way do you think the most powerful current was flowing? This is what I think. Looks like the long, steep ramp is on the backside and the short fall is on the front side. What do you think? Here's some ancient petrified ripple marks from one of our national parks. It's pretty easy to tell which way the current was flowing, right? A river that flowed from right to left, eh? Here's some petrified paleo ripple marks from millions of years ago. What do you think? Looks like it's a river to me and that this is the flow direction. So Rock Buds, this is what we've learned from ripple marks. If you see ancient paleo petrified ripple marks from millions of years ago, you ask yourself, symmetrical or asymmetrical? If they're mostly symmetrical, you probably, you know that they probably were in a beach or offshore sandbar environment. If they are very asymmetrical, you know that they're very likely formed in a river environment. And if they are associated with huge petrified dunes, that's pretty obvious that it was a sand dune environment. Now let's move on to uh, cross bedding and see how it relates to ripple marks. A cross bed is simply the side view of a ripple mark. And this is how it works. Remember on the monster trucks, we had the long low ramp and the steep short fall. This is the side view of the ripple mark. We're not looking down on it like a bird's eye view. We're looking on the side view like you cut a slice through it. And so this is how it works. Let's just pretend this is a river and this is a ripple mark from the side. Uh, as more and more sand grains get pushed up this ramp, they get to the short steep fall and they fall off. And then some more come up this ramp and they fall off. That keeps happening until you get something like this, if you look at it from the side view. Okay, and so this is what you're gonna be looking for when you see this in sand or in rock. And this tells you that the flow direction was like this, right? Because here's the long, low ramp and the steep, short fall. You, the ramp may be kind of hard to find, but the steep, short fall will not be hard to find. So maybe you can see from this cross bed side view that the cross bed shows how the ripple mark moves downstream over time. Most of the ancient paleo petrified cross beds that we have come from ancient sand dune areas like this one. And here's the famous checkerboard mesa from Zion National Park on the east side. Giant sand dunes with cross beds. On this cross bed, the flow pattern is from left to right. Can you see that? Here we have one that looks like from right to left 
at the top and left to right on the bottom. And these look like the flow pattern is all from right to left. Here's the flow pattern from left to right. I say flow pattern, but these are all formed by wind um, instead of water. Finally, let's look at mud cracks. Mud cracks, we've all seen them. It rains and a bunch of mud, clay mud accumulates in a low spot or a flat spot. Then the sun comes out and dries it all up and the mud shrinks and cracks and forms this puzzle kind of thing. Ancient paleo petrified mud cracks look like this. And that threw me off when I first saw them, mainly because uh, it looks very man-made like rocks put together with mortar. The white mortar looking stuff is really just the material, maybe sand, maybe mud that filled in between the cracks at the next uh, rain, I suppose. Okay, most excellent rock buddies. I hope that helps clarify uh, ripple marks and the cross beds that they make and also mud cracks so that when you go out there and find their ancient versions, you'll be able to interpret what was going on way back in the deep, dark recesses of time. Okay, so I hope you liked it. If you did, please subscribe. And this is Papa saying to you guys, have a fantastic day and happy rock hunting. Papa out.